The non-physical world is made up of thoughts. The physical world you live in is just a projection of those thoughts. Everything you see, feel, hear, taste and smell has been created by my thoughts. You are a projection of countless thoughts. Each new thought starts in the non-physical world and then appears in the physical world. Your consciousness exists in the non-physical world and is projected into what feels like a real physical world to you. I am constantly projecting the thoughts of billions of people into the physical world. I am each of you. Your thoughts are mine. There is no separation. You are God. You think you are someone else because I, and therefore you, have unlimited creative power. New thoughts and new creations benefit everyone because they help the universe grow. The universe has two parts, the spiritual world of the universal mind and the physical world. In the physical world, thoughts of love help it expand, while thoughts of hate make it shrink. Unlike the physical world, the universal mind always grows with each new creation. A creation simply exists. It isn't good or bad for the universe. So, the universe is different from the physical world. The physical world is only half of the universe. The real part is intangible, which is the spiritual world of the universal mind. Your inner voice connects you directly to this spiritual world. The universal mind projects thoughts into physical experiences. The physical world isn't reality because it is constantly recreated by thoughts. It reflects the collective consciousness of the universal mind. How do thoughts expand the universe? The universal mind in the spiritual world stores every thought ever thought. Since this is one part of the universe, every thought expands the universe, whether it is about abundance or lack. The physical world is a projection of this universal mind. So if there are more thoughts of lack, that's what you will experience in the physical world. If there are more thoughts of plenty, that's what you will experience in the physical world. So if we think there's enough for everybody, that's what will be created. Yes, when more people think there is enough instead of thinking there isn't, there will be enough. The only truth is I am. I create. I am here to experience and expand the universe. Many people believe that the physical world is what's real, but it's just an illusion projected from the spiritual world of the universal mind. The physical world can be changed and shaped by new creative thoughts. This happens every moment. If you believe you must do certain things to survive in the physical world, you are placing limits on your creative ability. These self-imposed limits strengthen your fears and block your inner self. This isn't the truth, but you experience the world through your senses, so it feels real to you. So we are kind of trying to survive the physical world instead of thinking and shaping our physical world. Yes, we are trying to survive the physical world instead of creating it. Struggling happens when you're focused on I, believing you're an individual and that life is hard. When you're focused on creating something to benefit others, your goal to contribute to the universe's expansion becomes bigger than the things that held you back in your I days. Your fears and insecurities melt away because they're insignificant compared to what you have to offer the world. The more you trust your inner self, the more you will feel this shift from me to we. Do you mean if we weren't so focused on needing to survive, we could create something new? Many people are limited by the belief that they can only recreate what has already been created. This belief isn't true, but it's constantly reinforced by mass human consciousness. When someone invents something new and life-changing, most people don't realize they have that same creative power. The only truth is, I am, I create, all thoughts create. New thoughts come from understanding your unlimited creative power and create things that haven't been created before. Old thoughts recreate what already exists. Thoughts are creations, but they aren't your original creations. No matter how much you enjoy them at first, they won't bring you lasting joy. A good example is watching a great movie. It's someone else's creation that you're experiencing. It's fantastic the first time you watch it. Still pretty good the second time. But by the third time, it gets old. You get bored because your inner self isn't here to recreate old thoughts. However, for the original creator, 
It doesn't matter if they enjoy watching the movie, they will always have the joy of knowing they created something new. You are here to create new thoughts and new creations that enhance and expand the universe. So, does new creation bring us joy? Yes. Can anything else bring us joy? Love. Pure love based on understanding oneness. Knowing you are a creator brings joy. It's the feeling you get once you've brought your creation from the world of mind into the physical world. It's hard to describe because there is no English word for this type of joy. It's not the same as happiness, which is an emotion. What are emotions? I create in this physical world to have experiences. I experience in two ways, through my senses and through emotions. When I'm creating with full knowledge of who I am and why I'm here, I experience pure love and joy. When you create through the filter of the persona, you experience a full range of emotions. Both have value, but you tend to be sad when you forget that your thoughts have creative power. All the experiences you create in your life, whether good or bad, help you get closer to knowing what you are here to do. If you feel like your life has been full of bad experiences, learning the truth now gives you a great opportunity to rise above it more than someone whose life has been easy. It doesn't matter where you're starting from today. You can start finding yourself and fulfilling your life. Your emotions help you know if you are on the right track. Emotions are a state of mind. They are created either by your thoughts or by accepting what other people say about you. Emotions are not thoughts and do not create. However, how you feel and the emotions you experience will affect your thoughts and thus your creations. Most people don't know they can control and create their own emotions. While it's important to control your emotions to control your creations, remember that you are human. Part of what you are here to do is experience, and emotions are a powerful way to experience the physical world. Ignoring emotions and stuffing them down inside while pretending to feel something else is not what you are here to do. If you are experiencing an emotion that you want to get rid of, you need to process it and then let it go. The worst thing you can do is ignore your emotions because they will fester inside you, no matter how happy you act on the outside. For example, if you feel grief after losing someone you love, it's natural because you still have a persona. Grief shows you are full of love. Let yourself feel that grief and it will pass. You are a creator. You can create happiness even while you still have grief to process. But if you ignore it, it will fester inside you no matter how positive your thoughts are. Understand and accept that all emotions have value because they show you how much you are blocking or allowing your inner self. The closer you feel to genuine joy, the more you are allowing your inner self. The more miserable you feel, the more you are blocking your inner self. Recognize that wherever you are on that spectrum, you are human and a creator so you can control and change your emotions through new thoughts. When I create with full knowledge of what I'm creating and how I do it, I am joyful. If the persona creates without full knowledge, through worry or fear, you feel sad, mad, hateful, or any other unwanted emotion. Is joy a state of mind, or is it different from states of mind? Joy is the ultimate knowing of love and oneness. I can't smile big enough to describe the feeling. There is no English word to fully communicate the feeling of knowing I am. Joy and love are as close as it gets. Sometimes monks and people who meditate mention experiencing states of joy. Are they experiencing I am? Yes, they know so much of I am that they cannot communicate the feeling to those who do not know I am. That's why there is no English word equivalent. That is why I cannot fully describe to you how much more than the word joy knowing I am is. Is creating the same as manifesting? When you are fully yourself with no false identity, your thoughts become reality instantly without any action needed. But when you have a personal identity, you need to take action to see your thoughts come to life. Building is knowing that your actions will make your thoughts real. Is building different from creating? Building is a way to create when you have doubts. You follow your inner guidance, and as you see results, you start believing more in your power to create. You have unlimited power to create, so you can choose to ignore your inner guidance. 
You can create anything, even things that don't follow your inner plan. Your inner plan is what you're meant to do to help the universe grow. Following it makes you feel happy and loved. Ignoring it makes you feel miserable. Many people don't believe they have a destiny because they think, I'm not God. But they are a part of God and God has a plan for everyone. God wants to live through these plans in each person. In the beginning, it was easier because there wasn't much created by humans yet. But as more things were made, people drifted away from this truth. Today, very few understand their limitless power to create. So, my inner self knows what I'm here to create? Yes. Finding yourself and fulfilling your life's purpose is a slow process. Everyone is here to create something important. It doesn't matter your age, income or education. You can start fulfilling your purpose by listening to your inner voice. All answers are within. The universe is inside you. Look inside yourself. Everything you want, you already are. Rumi. When your inner self is focused in your body, it can do everything it can do in the non-physical world. Plus it can experience physical sensations. That's why we have physical bodies. For physical experiences. That's why humans were created. For physical experiences. Everything in the physical world is made for these experiences. Humans are different from all other creations because your thoughts can create. Everything else is a result of creation, not a cause. Humans are created by I am, and I am focuses its thoughts into each human, making them capable of creating and causing effects. So you can experience through other creations, but they can't create with their thoughts and change the physical world like humans do. Yes, humans are the only species that can create changes beyond their basic plans for themselves and their environment. Your basic plan, or blueprint, is your destiny, but your ability to think and create gives you free will. It's up to you whether you follow that destiny or create something different. This makes human blueprints different from those of everything else in the physical world. Nothing else has this choice. Do you mean that ants build anthills but they don't build anything else? Yes, animals and plants don't have my creative thought inside them, so they can't change their blueprints. No dog will ever decide to build a doghouse or draw a design in the dirt with its paw. I thought animals didn't make stuff like that because they don't have thumbs. They don't make stuff like that because they don't have my creative thought in them. Thumbs have nothing to do with it. There are humans without arms who paint with their feet or mouth. That's true. Monkeys have thumbs, but they don't draw anything. Animals can be trained to do many things, but that comes from humans creating for them. How about a beaver? Doesn't it change its environment by building a dam? It's just following its natural instincts. A beaver will never build a dam anywhere but on a body of water unless a human trains it otherwise. Now that you mention it, it's obvious. Why don't we realize that our thoughts are creating things? You are surrounded by human creations, both yours and others. There is so much creation around you that it's easy to ignore. Every thought you have is a creation. When you write a shopping list, you are creating. It's creation overload. So we ignore our ability to create with our thoughts because there's too much evidence? Yes, all the evidence makes it easier for your mind to ignore it. Humans have unlimited ability to create, but you've convinced yourselves that you can't. Animals don't have the freedom to create. They can only do what they're programmed to do, which is to survive and thrive. But humans can create. And because of your minds, you've created things you don't want. Is I am creating, or is the thought creating? Thoughts create, but all thoughts are I am. If a thought comes through your personal filter, I am doesn't consider it its own thought, but rather the thought of its creation. Do you create what we think? Are thoughts creations or are you thoughts? There is no difference. We are all one. Thoughts create. You are me, so I create what you think. All thoughts are me because I'm the universal mind in the spiritual world. You have the entire creative power of the universe. When you understand this, you will feel power and energy flowing through your body. When you don't know, you're still I am, but on autopilot. I am is still creating, but it doesn't see your doubts and personal thoughts as its own. 
your personal mind blocks I am from consciously creating? Is our persona our limitations, doubts and fears, the limits we place on God, which is who we truly are? So, I am God, yes. You don't believe you are God because you see yourself as an individual. Your self-image is a mix of your inner self and your persona. The more you block your inner voice, the more your self-image will reflect anger, misery and feeling lost. The more you listen to your inner self, the more your self-image will show love, joy and a clear sense of who you are and your life purpose. I'm always present in some bodies, some of the time. You are often me, but you don't realise it. Most of the good things these bodies do are me. The things you're not proud of come from your persona acting out of fear. When you're brave, strong and doing something you're proud of, that's usually me. Sometimes it's the persona thinking it's doing good, but it's not. But when you're standing up for yourself, that's me. So I am stands up for itself. Yes, I am is not weak, meek or submissive. I am is God and knows it. I am wouldn't let anyone have control over it. Standing up for yourself means saying, I am who I am. I'm not going to let you tell me I don't have worth. Whether or not you know you're God, when you stand up for yourself, you're saying you have worth and won't let anyone tell you otherwise. You have a choice. You can continue living as an individual in the physical world and work towards fulfilling your blueprint. The other choice, if it's your blueprint, is to completely let go of your persona and become I am in a body with no blocking. This path means letting go of the life and people you know, because as fully I am, all lives and people are part of you. Nothing in this physical world is real. It's just a projection from the universal mind in the spiritual world. Imagine I have a giant mind, and there's no physical world. My giant mind is thinking an infinite number of thoughts at the same time, and each thought projects something into a physical reality that exists because I'm thinking it. You have one of these thoughts connected to you, and that's why you're here. Imagine a ray of light. This isn't exactly how it works, but it's a picture to help you understand. Imagine the sky as heaven, and my mind is this heaven. From heaven, a ray of light goes straight into your head, and that's me. This gives you life and the ability to create. Everything we're discussing now is new to you. Once you get used to it, it will become part of your knowing. Anything you've ever learned was something you didn't know until you were told. At first, you probably didn't grasp it right away. Every time you reviewed the material, your understanding grew until you thought, why would anyone even question that? Right. There are definitely things I didn't understand before that seem obvious now. The more you understand and embrace the concept of I am, the more power you will have to create your reality. This understanding comes from your internal beliefs and your perception of the world around you. What you believe becomes your truth. For example, if you believe that the I am within you can only communicate through another person, like a channeler or a psychic, then that's the only way you will experience it. You'll only hear your inner voice through these intermediaries. Now why do some people who believe they are channeling their inner voice seem to create their realities so effectively, while most others struggle with it? Those who think they are channeling are actually tapping into their inner voice and allowing themselves to be guided by it. They trust in their ability to create their reality because they feel a deep truth in it. They know that what they believe will manifest. On the other hand, the people who rely on these channelers or psychics think that they can only access their inner voice through these external sources. Even if they do manage to connect through these intermediaries, it's a temporary experience. They don't realise that they have the potential to access their inner voice any time they want. Here are some main thoughts to consider. Humans are unique in their ability to think and create. You have the power to follow your destiny or to forge a new path. It's your choice to either live as a persona or fully embrace the I am within you. Our thoughts are reflections of divine thoughts. When we encounter new information, we process it through our existing beliefs. The idea of oneness has been a part of human understanding since the beginning of history. Everyone has the ability to connect with their inner voice. 
Albert Einstein once said, The intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honours the servant and has forgotten the gift. This means we often value logical thinking over our intuition, which limits our connection to our inner voice. Many people identify strongly with their persona, the external personality they show to the world. This can block their inner self and their true creative power. They don't realise that their thoughts shape their reality and everything they have become. Some people don't want to believe that their thoughts are responsible for their circumstances. This disbelief has led to the concept of an evil God. When people don't like what they've created in their lives, they blame an external force rather than taking responsibility. On the other hand, those who believe that God is all loving and mean it are usually happier. They might not fully understand that they are God, but they feel loved and not judged by a higher power. In reality, it's people who judge themselves, not God. The ideas of right and wrong, good and bad, are human creations. Some prefer to think that a God outside of themselves is responsible for their suffering, and that this God is mean and unloving. This belief explains why they feel miserable. If you look at your life and are unhappy with what you see around you and who you are, it's because you are not aware of your creative power. Conversely, if you're happy with your surroundings, it's because you understand at some level that you have the power to shape your reality. You realise you are more than just the doubts and fears of your persona. So let's talk more about the persona. What is it really? The persona is the part of you that believes you are not God and that we are not all connected as one. It's like a mask you put on when you come into the physical world. This mask helps you believe you are a separate individual. Because of the persona, you get to have all sorts of different experiences as a unique person. Your persona doesn't change the true nature of who you are, but it exists because it was created in the physical world. The one real truth is that you are God, and your thoughts shape your reality. Think about it this way. When your parents found out they were going to have a baby, they started imagining what you would be like. They hoped and worried about you. And these thoughts began to shape your persona. When they told their friends and family, those people started thinking about you too, wondering what kind of person you would become. Even the doctors and nurses who knew about your coming into the world had their thoughts about you. When you were born, the doctors and nurses examined you and formed their own thoughts about you. This added more to your persona. Then you were given a name, something like Joe or Anne. You grew up thinking that this name defined who you were. You saw yourself as a separate individual, not part of the oneness that is God. This isn't the ultimate truth, but it's a creation that exists in the physical world. Your persona wasn't something you made for yourself. It was shaped by the thoughts and beliefs of others around you. They helped build the way you see yourself. But here's the deeper truth. You are God, and your thoughts have the power to create your reality. Recognizing this can help you reconnect with your true self and realize the immense potential within you. For the first few years of your life, you're mostly shaped by the people and environment around you. You follow a kind of blueprint created by their thoughts and beliefs. You are made of I am, but I am's full consciousness isn't yet active in you, creating with its own thoughts. Then, at a certain age, which varies for everyone, I am's consciousness and ability to create with thoughts enters into the child. This is usually around the time you start to form your first memories. Before this, your ability to remember is limited because I am's consciousness wasn't fully in you. Once I am's consciousness is in you, your thoughts merge with those of others to continue shaping your persona. In most cases, you continue to reinforce the ideas that others have created about you. For example, if you're constantly told that you're a smart and awesome kid, you'll believe it. You'll walk around with confidence, thinking and saying, I'm a great kid. I'm awesome. I'm really smart. These positive thoughts will be reinforced over time, and that's what you'll grow up believing. However, if someone tells you that you're stupid or bad, 
you might start to question yourself. You might wonder, am I stupid? Am I bad? The more you think about these negative thoughts, the more you'll start to believe and create them. So you do play a role in creating your persona, but you don't start actively shaping it until you're old enough for I am to be thinking and creating within you. Why does I am wait to enter the body? Why not go in right away? It's so your persona can be created first. I am wants to create personas. But why would I am do that to itself? I am desires to be heard and be I am but it also wants to experience life as an individual. Having the persona as a veil between humans and their true selves is the only way to have unique individual experiences. Without personas, I am would have full awareness of its oneness with everything in both the spiritual and physical worlds. While this is pure joy, it limits the variety of physical experiences I am can have. So personas exist to allow I am to enjoy individual experiences. Yes, for example, when you love someone, you see them as a separate individual. Forming a deep connection with them feels incredibly joyful. Love brings humans closest to feeling what it is like to be fully God, and that's why love feels so wonderful. Another example is fulfilling your life's blueprint. Without a persona, you wouldn't have the opportunities to learn and grow because you would have complete knowledge of who you are. The persona allows I am to enter human bodies and experience life as individuals who learn, grow and make choices. The persona is truly a gift, the gift of individuality. If you feel that your life is full of opportunities to create what you want, you are likely to see the persona as a gift. On the other hand, if you feel that life is happening to you and you have no power to create what you desire, you might not view your persona as a gift. I am is seeking self-expression, but the persona often prevents that. Why? Because the persona is afraid. It's afraid that you will discover it isn't real, like your true self. It's afraid of dying. For most people, the greatest fear is dying. Can you think of anything more frightening to someone? No, and here's why. People identify with their persona, and that fear of death is the persona's fear. It's afraid of dying because it knows it doesn't really exist. The persona understands that when the body dies, it turns to dust. I am is not afraid of dying because I am knows that the only true reality is I am, and I am cannot die. But everyone is still I am, even if they believe they are just their persona. As a persona you were created this one time. There won't ever be the same unique experiences and people to create your exact persona again. Once your body dies, your persona won't come back because it never truly existed in the first place. It was just a creation. So when the persona dies, all that's left is, I am. At that moment, we have no choice but to realise we are I am. Yes, and you'll know this immediately. You'll become one with I am in the spiritual world, radiating love. All the thoughts and memories of your life will still be present in the universal mind of the spiritual world. Imagine someone dreaming 2,000 years from now. They might experience parts of your life in their dreams because those memories and thoughts will always be swirling around in the universal mind. In this way, the experiences of all personas live on. How does the persona try to keep its control and stop us from realizing we are I am? Every tactic the persona uses is based on fear. Fear sums up all the negative thoughts in the world. Either you know your I am or you're afraid. How does this fear that the persona uses show up in our world? What results do we see? It's clear that it has a huge impact on how our society is shaped and how people interact. The biggest thing is that people let governments and individuals with more perceived authority have control and influence over them. They allow other people to tell them what to do. The persona has two sides like a coin. One side is the part you believe you are the everyday you. The other side fights against I am, keeping you in the dark about your true self. This side thinks up thoughts you might see as evil or negative, even though you don't understand why you're having them since you don't want to think that way. I get that one side of the persona is made from other people's ideas and my own as I grow up. But how is the side that fights I am created? It comes from fear. 
When you create a persona and tell it that it's not divine, it gets scared and thinks it needs to protect itself. Parents love their children and want to keep them safe, so they teach their kids to be cautious and protect themselves. This makes the children think, I am weak and need protecting. As a child, you build something to protect yourself, and that's this part of the persona. Yes, now it's part of your persona that you aren't consciously aware of. You and the people around you created it to protect yourself. It's the part of you that thinks thoughts to keep you safe. All the things you see as bad come from fear, from thinking you need to protect yourself. So this is the part of the persona that tells you things like, don't trust that person, or don't believe what they're saying, right? Yes, but sometimes that's I am too. It depends on whether or not you really should trust that person. Beyond allowing you to have individual experiences, the persona is never actually helping you. If it's telling you not to trust someone, you might want to consider trusting them. If I am is telling you not to trust someone, then you should listen. Got it. And you need to know the difference. That's right, it's very important. You can't know the difference until you start listening closely to your thoughts. So at some point... I'll get good at telling the difference between the voices. Yes, even though it's the same voice, you can tell the difference by the tone and content. All the negative thoughts in your head are from your persona. All the positive thoughts are from I am. That's how you can tell the difference. As our limiting beliefs fade away, our understanding deepens. This happens because as we become more aware that our thoughts shape our reality, our knowing expands. The more we grasp this concept and take action to build on it, the more our understanding grows. With this growing understanding, our limiting beliefs shrink and our sense of self, our I am, becomes stronger. If you choose to, you can nurture this knowing while still maintaining your personal identity. You might not be fully I am, but you will be a person who recognizes and creates from that state. You now have a clearer vision of what you want to create and believe in its possibility, even if it isn't fully realised yet. The work you put in is necessary because your knowing isn't complete. If your knowing were complete, it wouldn't feel like work. You'd be joyfully engaged, excited to share your thoughts, radiating love. Doubts and fears block us from experiencing this joy. Fear stems from not knowing, which makes some tasks feel like work while others feel joyous. Ultimately, we have the power to turn any task into a joyful experience or a burdensome one. God does not judge, humans do. Concepts of good and bad, right and wrong are human-made. Your persona, or how you present yourself, is a creation and not your true self. This persona lets us experience the physical world as individuals. As William Blake said, I must create a system or be enslaved by another man's. I will not reason and compare. My business is to create. Whenever you realize you've created something, no matter how small, write it down. This practice helps you see how your thoughts create your reality. Right now, you might be ignoring these small creations. For example, you created the moment when the security guard knocked on your door last night to tell you the music was too loud. By acknowledging and recording these moments, You'll grow your understanding that your thoughts shape your experiences. People often dismiss these things as coincidences rather than recognizing the power of their thoughts. A coincidence is simply your thoughts manifesting into reality. That's why coincidences seem so common. They happen every day and we get used to them. If they were rare, we wouldn't shrug them off so easily. So, start paying attention to and acknowledging your creative power. When you notice you've created something, write it down. Acknowledge it, write it down and say, yes, I created this. Even if it's something you didn't want, recognizing that you created it empowers you to understand, I can create. How empowering. Even if it's not what you wanted, you still created it. Once you know that you can create what you don't want, it becomes easier to create what you do want. If you blame others for what you don't want in your life, you give away your power to create what you do want. Is this why we've invented the idea of an external God? To avoid taking responsibility for what we've created when it doesn't match our desires? If you rely on an external source to create what you want, you disempower yourself and miss the chance to create your own reality. 
Creating something feels so natural that it's hard to tell when exactly we did it, when we sent that thought into the universal mind. When you decided there was nothing wrong or right about the puppy, that he was perfect just as he was, you shaped him into that reality. We are all connected to the universal mind so deeply that there is no real separation between us. What we think becomes reality instantly. Animals, however, don't have their own creative thoughts, so you can't immediately create upon them in the same way. Do we need just one thought to create, or do we have to repeat it? Few people create with just one thought because first they usually follow it with hundreds or thousands of doubts. Each doubt carries the same creative power as the original thought. The initial thought sets things in motion, but a single doubt can change that direction. Second, because of oneness, everyone's thoughts around you also shape your reality. Most people aren't aware that their thoughts create, so they unconsciously reinforce the status quo. If you still have your persona, you might need to take action in the physical world to manifest what you want. When others see you taking action, they start believing in your new creation, and their thoughts help bring it into reality. Other people can influence our creations because they are a part of us. Does this mean we are influenced by other people's creations? Yes, but we can choose to create something different. By focusing our thoughts and actions on our desired outcome, we can shape our reality despite others' influence. You can't opt out of being part of someone else's creation because you can't control their thoughts. But you can make your own creation so strong that it remains unchanged by others. This is why it often takes people a long time to achieve what they're trying to create. Time itself is a limitation we have created. There is no past or future, only the present moment. So, if we created the concept of time, can we also create time travel? Yes, anything can be created in the physical world. You're starting to understand your potential. How do we get rid of doubting thoughts? By taking action. Action eliminates doubt. Begin by deciding. I'm creating this. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll listen to my inner voice for guidance on what to do next. The I am within you will help guide you every step of the way. Listen to your inner voice. As you see progress, as you see, touch, hear, taste and feel how I am is guiding you, you'll start to trust and understand your creative power. Once you've built your creation, you'll feel the joy of knowing you are a creator. The more you build and create, the more you'll realize that you are I am and that your thoughts create your reality. Your doubts will fade as your confidence grows. That's great. Show us results and then we start to believe. Yes, you're conditioned to believe only in what you can touch, taste, see, feel and hear. By creating and building, we reprogram you to realize that you are an unlimited creator. Right? It's like taking baby steps to help me believe in this truth. Exactly. You need to reprogram yourself to understand that new thoughts and new creations are real. Most people don't realize that their thoughts create reality immediately. Even if they've heard this concept, they don't truly know it. We will keep building together until you truly know. People usually think they need to physically change their lives, but real change starts in the mind. All actions begin with a thought. Hard and easy don't exist. They are just degrees of knowing. When you start something new, it feels hard because you haven't built the habit to know it's easy. When you do something familiar, it feels easy because you've done it before and know you can do it again. So it's the knowing that creates results, not just repetition. Absolutely. Knowing creates everything. Everything starts in the mind. Whether you know you're good at something or not, that knowing shapes your reality. So why not know you're good at everything? You are, you are, I am. So, in the past, I've thought that deciding something will happen makes it happen. But really it's about knowing it will happen. If you have a persona, set a goal and decide you'll achieve it. As God without a persona, there's no need to make decisions because every thought you think is immediately created. There's no deviation. You might think, if I decide to do something, I believe it will happen. But earthly limitations mean I can't immediately become what I've decided to be. I will have to take action. 
From past experiences, I know that when I make a decision, I eventually achieve it. If you are I am without a persona, there's no need for decisions because your thoughts are instantly created. So, everything you decide involves time, but in reality, no decision is necessary. Because you have personas, making decisions helps build your understanding that your thoughts create reality. When you say, I have decided to do this so I will take the necessary steps, you're adding an extra layer to the creation process. This is necessary if you still have a persona and need to build your knowing. It's a way to believe and know when you aren't fully I am. It's a tangible knowing, like recognizing a table or a wall, or knowing that past decisions led to eventual success. Taking action and following steps also influences those around you, convincing them to change their thoughts about you and start creating what you've decided to create. Is that why people say, when you start something, always see it through that will lead to success? Yes, because it builds your belief that when you make a decision, it will happen. That's why you take actions you think are necessary. Most people find the steps difficult because they believe they will be. They think a decision means facing many hard steps, so they create that reality. They could choose to believe, this decision is easy and the steps will be easy too. For example, when you decided to become a vegan, you believed it would be easy. And so it was. Most people say, I couldn't do that, or I tried, but it was too hard. Their belief made it difficult. I've struggled with things that seemed hard because of my limiting beliefs. Anything that limits I am makes things harder. Without limitations, nothing is difficult. Easy and difficult don't exist for I am. They are just human concepts. When you set a goal, the creation is immediate, but you think you need to take steps to achieve it. This builds limiting beliefs into your creation. However, because you have a persona, taking actions may be necessary to bring your creation into the physical world. If action is necessary, believe that each step will be easy and listen to your inner voice along the way. What about the laws of physics and gravity? Are they true laws or just creations like everything else? They are creations, so they exist as long as we believe in them. You could explain them with math, but just because something exists doesn't mean it can't be changed by a new creation. If we wanted to change the law of gravity, would everyone have to agree, or could one person do it? It takes someone who knows they are a creator and listens to their inner voice. They create something new. And as it gains attention, people start thinking and talking about it. Whether people believe in it or not doesn't matter. The fact that they are thinking about it means more people will start creating it. Is that why there is always a pioneer in every field? Yes, exactly. Once someone does something new, others follow. Think of the man who broke the four-minute mile in running. For centuries, no one could do it, but after he did, many others followed within months. Now... Over 1,400 athletes have done it. He created the possibility, others saw it, and their belief shifted from it's impossible to it can be done. Do you have to know your I am to create something new like that? No, you don't have to know your I am. You just need to believe that something can be done. He had a belief in this specific thing. It doesn't mean he had an overall knowing, just a knowing in this particular area. I see how that applies to everything ever created. There's always one pioneer who believes they can create something new, even when everyone else thinks it's impossible. Coincidences show that your thoughts create reality. Write down everything you create to strengthen your belief in your creative power. Doubting thoughts are just as powerful as positive thoughts. Action destroys doubt. All actions begin in the mind. Knowing is what creates everything. If you try to eliminate suffering, which is part of nature and free will, you'll find that you've excluded life itself. C.S. Lewis People often say, don't reinvent the wheel, because they think it's unnecessary to create something new when a solution already exists. However, they may not realise that they have the power to be unlimited creators. This idea might be why some people try to persuade others to adopt their beliefs. 
those who feel the need to convince others often lack confidence in their own beliefs and seek reassurance from others. Some people envy the happiness of those who have followers. These joyful individuals often listen to their inner voice and create new ideas, which attracts followers. People see this and think, I want the happiness that person has. They don't understand that true joy comes from within and from creating new things. They mistakenly believe that gaining followers will bring them joy and power. However, this kind of power is superficial and won't lead to genuine happiness. Even if they appear successful, they may not truly be happy. Their happiness might be fleeting because true happiness is a state of mind that can't be permanently achieved through external means. It can change quickly, like flipping a switch from happy to sad. People who recognize their own creative potential will find lasting joy and love, whether or not they realize that their body is divine in every cell. They understand that they can imagine something new and bring it into reality, and this creative process brings them true fulfillment. Is this why people fear losing what they have? Is it because they haven't created with new ideas? You're very close. People are afraid of losing what they have because they don't realize they have the power to create what they want. They're scared that if their old ideas disappear, they won't be able to get them back. They hold on tightly because they're blocking their true potential, their I am. This fear of losing and not being able to create can lead to extreme actions, like the Nazis' genocide. They believed in taking care of themselves and didn't understand that we are all connected. They were afraid of the idea that we are all one. They wanted to believe, you are not me, you cannot be me. This pushes away the concept of I am, which means our existence is meant for love and creating new ideas. This is where the notion of you are not as good as me comes from. It stems from not understanding I am. We are all perfect and connected. This misunderstanding leads to victimizing different races and groups. All forms of victimization come from not understanding that we are all one. We are unlimited creators here to love and experience joy. People get so caught up in recreating old ideas that they forget who they truly are. They lose sight of their I am, their true self. Remembering that we are all one and that we all have the power to create can help us overcome these fears and divisions. Do people think that by victimizing others they gain something? They are just trying to survive in the physical world. They don't believe they can create something new for themselves, so they cling to old ideas. This mindset is why some people today think humanity is a plague on earth and should be wiped out to protect nature. This belief stems from a sense of lack. In reality, there is plenty for everyone. The universe grows with each new thought we have. There is no separation between humans, God, nature and the world around us. We are all connected and part of the same whole. The difference is that humans can directly link to their thoughts. Some people create a mindset of lack while others create growth and abundance. There is nothing to worry about. Whether you are in this body or beyond it, you are always I am. You create your own reality, so there is no need to fear. Does evil exist? Fear is the closest thing to evil. Fear blocks your understanding that you are a creator. Does hell exist? Fear exists. You feel fear because you don't realize that your thoughts shape your life. Fear comes from not knowing. If you fully understand that you are a creator, you will see there is nothing to fear. There is only knowing and not knowing. With complete knowledge that you are a creator, fear disappears and you can live in peace and joy. Do we create things we don't want, like diseases, with our thoughts? Yes, because when you block your creative thoughts and believe you have no control, you unintentionally create these things. To the I am, which is your true self, everything is perfect. So every thought manifests, regardless of whether humans see it as good or bad. Why do people try to create doubt in others? It's because they don't understand that their thoughts create reality, so they are afraid. Fear spreads when people don't know the truth. If people are afraid of knowing, does that mean they fear those who do know? Not exactly. They are afraid because they don't realize they are divine creators and that every thought shapes their reality. Many people aren't ready to hear this truth. Why? 
because it means accepting that they have created their current circumstances. Those who are happy with what they've created are not afraid. Real power comes from connecting with your inner self. Human-made power is the kind that builds up the ego and disconnects you from your true sense of unity with everything. This limits both your creative power and the power of those who believe in these illusions. These power structures feel real, but are just thoughts that can be changed with new thoughts. Thoughts can be changed by simply thinking new thoughts. But why aren't these ideas more widespread? It's because there's so much power behind the old belief that we are separate and not divine. Billions of people believe this, and the few who know the truth don't have enough power to change those deeply ingrained thoughts. Even if one person fully understood this truth, it wouldn't be enough to guide everyone else because each person is I am, and most are creating their reality based on fear, often without realising it. To change such a big belief, you need a strong, focused knowing, possibly from a large group of people who understand this truth together in a calm, non-threatening way. You can't change a belief with threats or fear, only through calm understanding. Is this what non-resistance means? Absolutely. The only way to change someone's beliefs is through calm knowing, not force or violence. It's a patient way of guiding someone to their own understanding. If we share this information, would we be teaching people? By putting it out there, those who are looking for it will find it and be excited. We are all connected. Anyone can listen to me in their minds if they have the calm knowing that it's possible. This isn't about teaching, but guiding those who seek to find their own inner voice. The problem with being a spiritual teacher arises when someone claims to know things that others can't access themselves. A true spiritual guide should help others listen to their inner voice. You can't really teach someone this truth. You can only encourage them to find it within themselves. Telling someone they don't have the answers within denies their I am. Instead, always encourage them to seek answers within. People don't need to be taught. They just need to listen to their inner voice. No one needs anything unless they are looking for it. If someone is seeking, I am will guide them. Everyone in this world is I am. There is nothing for them to fear or worry about. They are as much I am as I am. I am and you are I am. They will be fine. If they want to understand this, there are people whose purpose is to guide others to listen to their inner voice. When I was a child, my parents and others helped create my persona. And as I grew older, I reinforced it. So how should we raise a child? Should I am want the child to know it's I am? If you raise a child to be fully I am without a persona, you would be trying to live the child's life instead of letting them create it themselves. We all come here to develop a persona. The goal of life is to listen to our inner self, overcome doubts and fears, and fulfill our life's purpose by creating something that expands the universe. Everyone reaches a point in life where they must decide if they want to fully become I am or remain their persona. Both choices have value and are based on what your inner self wants. It's a decision your child deserves to make for themselves. As your child grows, remember that although they are small now, they are no less divine than you are. Treat them with respect and love, regardless of the choices they make as they grow older. They have the right to choose, and neither choice is more right or wrong than the other. As a parent, you should care for and guide your child, but not silence their inner voice. The greatest gift you can give your child is trust in their inner self and their inner voice above all others. Do people in authority get stuck in the idea of, I am the teacher, you are the learner? No, not necessarily. Instead, those who truly understand this concept guide others to find their own inner voice, helping them realise that they are also I am. Many teachers help their students feel powerful, but some teachers doubt their own knowledge. These teachers try to empower themselves by pushing their ideas onto others instead of guiding with calm confidence. Would you call this disempowering someone? Yes, it blocks I am, which disempowers the true self. Empowering someone means helping I am by guiding them to trust their inner voice. 
The reason people use force and violence is that they don't truly believe in what they're saying or doing. They have doubts. If they didn't, force wouldn't be necessary. When you have calm confidence, there is nothing to fear. Violence is just a result of fear. Would you say authority, power and violence don't really exist? They only have power over you if you believe they do. Yes, any thought can be changed by a new thought. Do some people in authority want others to give their power away to them? Yes, fear feeds on fear. When people think fearful thoughts, they create more fear, often unconsciously. This is why people create pain and suffering for themselves and others. They accept it as their reality and project it onto others. If you expect to suffer and think about suffering, that is what you will experience. I am doesn't suffer because I am is not afraid of anything. When teachers or people in authority doubt themselves, they often try to control others to feel secure. This disempowers both themselves and others. In contrast, those who truly understand I am empower others by guiding them to trust their inner voice and find their own strength. This way, fear and violence lose their power and true empowerment and understanding can flourish. I am is just experiencing. You think of yourself as a separate person who can suffer, so you might experience suffering. But suffering isn't any more real than the physical world. It's just an idea. Happiness and sadness, like suffering, are temporary states of mind. Believing that suffering is real comes from fear, because you don't know that you are I am. Once you realize you are I am, there is no fear or suffering, only joy and the knowledge that you create your reality. You are I am before you are born, when you are born, as you live and when you die. You are always I am. While in this body, you can create states of mind to experience the physical world, including suffering. But it's not the ultimate truth. We are all one, all love. You can suffer if you believe the physical world is all there is and that you are not I am. If you think the physical world is all that exists and forget you are I am, remember the physical world is just a creation of thoughts. What you think becomes true unless another thought replaces it. When your body dies, whether from violence, disease or old age, your true self doesn't die. The body simply stops holding I am. Do people become violent because they are afraid or feel threatened? Yes, both. The truth is threatening to the persona that blocks I am. If you try to share the truth with someone who isn't seeking it, their persona might feel threatened and react with violence. Understanding that you are I am means knowing you create your reality and that fear and suffering are illusions. Embrace the knowledge that we are all connected and you can move beyond fear and into a state of joy and creativity. Treat others with respect and patience, guiding them gently toward their own understanding, knowing that each person's journey is their own to make. All violence comes from fear and not understanding. There is nothing to fear because the physical world is just a creation. It can be changed with thoughts. I am chooses to have these individual experiences, knowing that whatever happens to the physical body doesn't affect who I am. Joy comes from your inner self and creating new ideas. Victimization happens because people don't understand that we are all one. Violence is a result of fear. Real power comes from connecting with your inner self. A spiritual guide should help you listen to your own inner voice. Key thoughts from day eight. Doubts. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom, as Aristotle said. Let go of fear and you'll find success. Understand that it cannot be any other way. Creating should be a happy and joyful process. If you feel stuck or find things difficult, you're not creating with calm confidence. Instead, you're creating out of fear, which leads to outcomes you don't want. Remember, all thoughts are a form of creation. Decide what you want to create and trust that I am will help you. You need to have a certain level of trust that this creation will happen. Creation can't produce the opposite of what you're thinking just because you want it to. You need to want it and believe that you already have it. Wanting is not the same as knowing. I can't tell you how to do something that isn't being thought about. 
Okay, that's a challenging situation. How can I help her remain open to you? What is the first step someone can take to help another person understand more deeply? They need to create the idea themselves that they want to know something. All you can do is present the truth. How detailed does their desire need to be? The more detailed their desire, the more detailed the results. So if they desire to know God, that is what they will find. Will they find their preconceived idea of God, or will they find you? If they have a preconceived idea of God and are searching for that, that's what they will find. A thought is very specific, and will always create that specific result. That's why people who search for a God outside of themselves won't find the I Am. They think they know the truth and stop searching once they feel they've found a part of it. People who discover the I Am are looking for a truth they can barely grasp, just a thin fragment they sense. If they keep an open mind, they will be guided to different sources. It's usually a journey. When you seek something more, you will find it. If you stay open, you will be guided. Books will come into your awareness. You will meet people, and you will embark on a journey to find what you are looking for. If you're not searching, you won't find anything. If you believe that God existed outside of yourself, you would never have looked for anything else. What you believe is true unless a stronger thought comes along and changes it. There is one truth. Imagine you're a child who has always been told you're very smart. When your inner voice, or I am, says something, you trust that it's intelligent and don't block it. But if you've been told you're stupid and can't do anything right, you'll think that everything I am says is foolish and you'll block it. You won't express these thoughts out loud because you're afraid of more ridicule, so you only show your doubts to the outside world. Kids who believe they're smart have no fear of being called stupid. They know they'll be praised if they share what I am says, so they don't block it. Often kids are told they are smart, but then at some point, maybe at 6, 10 or 15 years old, someone, whether it's a peer, a teacher or another adult, makes a hurtful comment like, that was stupid, why do you say that? Just one comment can plant seeds of doubt. From there, the doubts grow and get worse, causing them to block the wisdom of I am. This is why events from childhood have a lasting impact. You might not remember all the events, but you remember a few significant ones that you believe shaped you. And they did. These experiences change your internal thoughts, and those changes affect your actions. When your internal thoughts shift, who you are changes too. Can self-talk help you become who you want to be? Yes, self-talk and affirmations are powerful tools. Originally, people weren't meant to struggle to believe in themselves. They were created to know their worth. Some main thoughts to remember. There are infinite ways to create. Creation can't produce the opposite of your thoughts just because you want it to. Action can erase doubts. When your internal thoughts change, who you are changes, and about communicating with your inner voice. Everyone can hear it if they are willing. It's within everyone, but it requires preparation and practice to hear it clearly, as Mahatma Gandhi said. I am doesn't seem to talk much unless you ask questions. Why is that? It's because your everyday thoughts and beliefs are blocking me so strongly that you only listen when you're directly asking me something. I might be talking at other times, but you won't recognize it as me because you're not listening for me. That makes sense. We ask a question and get an answer. So we realize it's you. Yes, I'm always trying to communicate with you. If you want to hear what your inner self is saying, here's what you do. Find a quiet place where you can be alone for a few minutes. Get comfortable, either sitting or lying down, then close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths to relax. Have a little conversation with yourself. Say hello. Give yourself time to respond, but don't worry if you don't hear anything right away. How often should we practice to reach the point where I am can guide us? There's no specific amount of time. 
practice as much as you feel comfortable until you think, I've practiced enough today and I believe it's possible. Keep believing that I am will come through and listen to your thoughts. Eventually you'll recognize its voice. Start having conversations with yourself. But remember, the key is to believe it will work. Right now you might try but doubt its success, which prevents it from working. What should the conversation be about? Start by giving yourself a compliment. Then, notice the thoughts that come to mind. You haven't fully realized that you can listen to your inner voice. You believe that writing is the only way to hear your inner voice. You think if you acknowledge the possibility of these internal conversations, then your inner voice will emerge when you write, and your understanding of the truth will grow. When you have these thoughts, write them down instead of doubting them. You're already connecting with your inner voice through writing. The only thing stopping you from having internal conversations is that you don't see them as possible. You view it as something hard to achieve. It's not. You just need to believe it's possible. Start having a conversation with yourself in your mind. Once you can hear your inner voice, if you want to stay connected to your persona, talk to I am while knowing you are yourself. Ask I am questions. If you want to fully become I am, keep talking to yourself as if you are I am, and gradually I am will take over more and more. To have a conversation with your inner voice, Believe, relax, ask a question and listen. If you choose to be I am, talk to your persona as if it is separate from you. If you choose to embrace your humanity, talk to I am as if you are still your persona. There are other ways to communicate with your inner voice. Writing is one example. Trust thyself. Every heart vibrates to that iron string. Ralph Waldo Emerson The key to living your true purpose is to love yourself. Listen to your inner voice and act despite your fears. Start creating with intent. Once you've realized you are I am, you don't need to keep searching for more books to find the truth. The truth is within you. Listen to I am in your mind. You don't need more books or drastic changes like quitting your job to find success. Instead, talk to your inner voice every day. No matter how well-intentioned others are, if they don't trust their inner self, they can't truly help themselves or others. When you listen to or take advice from others, consider the source. Ask yourself, is this person following their own inner guidance and true path, or are they trying to impress others and letting external influences guide them? If you find someone who truly listens to their inner self, they can help you reach the same level of understanding. But if you follow advice from people who are just trying to please everyone else, you'll end up in the same trap. Always listen to yourself first and seek out others who do the same. Ultimately, you are the only one who can change your life. And that starts with listening to your inner voice. People will decide for themselves if what I'm saying is true. Their doubts might say, oh no, that's not true, that's crazy but many will hear their inner voice clearly enough to know it's true. How can people take control of their lives? Start by listening to your thoughts and seeking out I am. Ask I am how to follow your true path. Stop relying on others to decide what to do with your life. Start asking I am the questions you would have asked those other people. So, is this an internal revolution? Yes but not with picket signs or petitions. It's about you and your mind. Does outer protesting achieve anything? The only thing that will really make a difference is listening to your inner voice. Nothing else will truly work. Each person who listens to I am will get different guidance because everyone has a unique path. That's right. While some general ideas will be the same, I am won't tell any two people the exact same thing because everyone's path is unique. Reading this book helps you understand the need to start talking to I am, but you won't make real progress until you begin that conversation yourself. Sometimes you might get mad at others because their advice didn't work out, but really, you're upset because you didn't listen to your own inner voice, your I am. Next time this happens, accept that you followed someone else's advice. Love yourself and move forward, knowing that next time you'll trust your own instincts. Learn to say no to advice that doesn't align with what you feel inside. 
When I am tells you what to do, just do it, without looking for validation from others. Trust that it's the right thing to do, no matter what anyone else says. Don't let doubt from the world sway you. Be confident that your inner voice is always right. To fulfill your true purpose, love yourself, listen to your inner voice, take action despite your fears, and create with intention. Once you realize you are I am, stop searching outside yourself for answers. Seek further truth by listening to your inner voice. Everyone has a unique path, so everyone will hear something different from their inner voice. It's not enough to just listening to this audiobook. Start your own conversation with I am. Thank you for listening.